Let's talk about a study in the United States about a reduction in miscarriages and early births. Can we reduce the risks of miscarriage in early births? Let's look at a U.S. clinic's data. In 2023, U.S. IVF clinics reported over 415,000 cycles of IVF, and when researchers analyzed this SART data, they compared cycles that had used PGTA, that is genetic testing of embryos before transfer, to those who did not. They found that PGTA was associated with a much gentler rise in miscarriage risk with age. Without PGT, miscarriage rates jumped from 16% in younger patients to over 50% in the oldest patients. With PGTA, which is genetic testing, they barely moved from 12 to 16%. Yeah. That putting Numbers on this, PGT is estimated to prevent around 14,983 miscarriages and 6,619 preterm or very preterm births in 2023, with 1,000 more potential avoidable if it had been used widely. By enabling single embryo transfers, PGTA will help families achieve healthy singleton pregnancies with fewer losses and fewer babies born. This debate about cost and oral live birth rates continues. Across the Atlantic, we debate often that whether PGTA should be done. But what is the biggest challenge of IVF? It is failure, its psychological impact, and its inability to return back due to financial and psychological impact. So do you have a method of improving chances of pregnancy? Not by just a technique, but by choosing an embryo which has the best potential to implant, lower the rate of miscarriage, give the best chance of achieving a pregnancy. On the other hand, if all the embryos are abnormal, you save huge number of months replacing them and not being able to achieve a pregnancy, increasing heartbreak as well as time wasted.